There were a lot of things going through my mind and through my heart and my soul, um, sitting up there waiting to to read the poem, waiting to be called up to the podium and then at the podium. Um, and it was really, you know, that was the first time I actually had any quiet time in about five weeks since I got the news. So most of those five weeks were spent on just getting the poem done, logistics, just getting through things um, um, and not even realizing that that this was even really happening. And I was so sitting there with my mother, who was the person who was sitting next to me at the inauguration, um, uh, was the first quiet moment, the first time that I had a moment to let all this really sink in. Um, and a lot of people are surprised that I didn't seem nervous or that I wasn't nervous. And they, they wonder how the hell could you do that and not like, you know, <laughs> freak out. And the truth is I wasn't nervous, uh, but not because I have nerves of steel or not because I'm that confident about myself or my work. Um, just something really unexpected and wonderful and magical and spiritual happened. Um, I don't, you know, if anybody's ever been to an inauguration, there's something almost sacred about it. And there's something, as I'm sitting there realizing that this is, you know, again, speaking about narratives, that this is part of a larger story. This isn't about my poem and I got to be perfect. There's something, this isn't even about the president. <laughs> this isn't even about Beyonce who <laughs> was there. This is really about a much grander narrative of what this country, that goes back to, you know, almost 300 years now. So um, you get really caught up in that. And, and of course, when you realize you're part of something larger, the ego takes a step back. And so that was part of what happened. It wasn't like I, I, I went up there as I'm Joe Blanco, the poet, you know, and I got to do this poem and then I would have been freaked out because my, my ego would have been like the one that wanted to be perfect. At that moment, I just realized that I was part of this grand moment, this grand happening right now. Um, and I also sort of, as I'm sitting there, I'm also realizing um, how different that narrative, how that, that very moment was so special and that was shifting the narrative. Again, as I was saying that, you know, that what I who I represented and what I represented as a gay, Latino, immigrant, et cetera, et cetera, um, that that was going to be voiced and that was going to be a live person now embodying that narrative. And it was me, <laughs> but it was not me, me. It was everybody with me. And, uh, and I, I felt just part of something grander and, and, and finally felt like there was an embrace. Um, and that was very soothing. That was, that's what, by the time I got up there, I wanted to read that poem. I needed to read that poem. And um, it was in some ways my connection with, this, with America in a way that I had never experienced. And it suddenly was just dawning on me. It was like this beautiful, beautiful moment. And I wanted to take it all in. And there was no way my ego was going to screw that up. Um, one small but important gesture was as I, as I walked up to the podium, you know, I'm just like going to do my poem, you know. <laughs> and the president and the vice president stand up and shake my hand. And I'm like, I wasn't expecting that. Um, here I am still thinking of this smaller space, this smaller narrative. And that just really, that little gesture just sort of felt so grand because it was, it was us reading that poem. It wasn't me, it was us. It was the entire country reading that poem. And the sense of the, not the sense of the president and vice president sort of presenting me to the country of saying, this is your country. You are part of this. This is part of who we are. It was just mind, mind boggling. And the fact that they were right behind me also sort of like literally had my back, <laughs> you know, like I felt so empowered um, in that moment. And uh, yeah, that was, that was the experience. And yet without, 
you know, there's a big sound delay in this is, goes all the way past the Washington Monument and I had, hadn't quite figured out why the president was making these long pauses between the speech and then it, I realized later. But So when I finished the poem, all I hear is like sort of... <laughs> so the people clapping in front and I I kind of thought to myself, there's a little smirk in the video. <laughs> like I'm literally thinking, well... Let's not quit my engineering job just yet. <laughs> and uh, and that, that whole, then when you turn around, it's, you know, it's like a, a one second, two second delay. And when you turn around, you hear this roar of applause and then the president and everybody's standing up again. I'm like, well, I guess. And even then it hadn't hit me. I'm like, well, I guess I did okay. Or, you know, you know, I guess it went off. I didn't, I didn't trip over any other words, you know, but I just, again, I just felt part of something larger, not taking myself so seriously, yet taking the moment completely seriously. And in some ways, you know, that was my grounding. And in a way, I, 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 I connected with America in a way I never had and never thought I could.